Why are chemtrails being denied? This is a question that begs to be answered. They are denied because they violate several international conventions and the legal codes of every nation on Earth. How do they violate the legal codes of every nation on Earth? By bypassing democratic checks and balances to be done in secret without people's knowledge and consent. If they are not a defense measure, why are chemtrails being kept secret? Why can governments know about the true purpose of chemtrails but not people? The only rational explanation is that they serve a depopulation purpose, in addition to being a climate change mitigation measure. And since governments are supposed to protect the lives of its citizens and not destroy them, chemtrails need to be kept secret and denied. So much for national legal codes. But what about international conventions? What international conventions do chemtrails violate? I have identified five. First, the Basel Convention, which entered into force in 1992 and 184 nations are signatories to, including the European Union, but excluding the US, which never ratified the Basel Convention. The full name of this convention is the Basel Convention on the Control of Transboundary Movements of Hazardous Wastes and Their Disposal. It is an international treaty that was designed to reduce the movements of hazardous waste between nations and specifically to prevent transfer of hazardous waste from developed to less developed countries. The Basel Convention is also intended to minimize the amount of toxicity of wastes generated and to ensure their environmentally sound management as closely as possible to the source of generation. As I have explained in my video presentation, what do we know about chemtrails? The primary compound they spray on us is coal ash, which is one of the largest industrial waste generated by developed nations. Coal ash contains contaminants like mercury, cadmium, and arsenic, all of which are hazardous waste. The US alone generates 130 million tons of coal ash annually, and the, EU, and the EU about the same. Dispersing coal ash from airplanes at high altitude is a clear violation of the Basel Convention. It is also in clear violation of national regulations. In the US, for instance, the Environmental Protection Agency, that's the EPA, has strict regulations for the management and disposal of coal ash, or as they call it, coal combustion residuals, which is just a fancy name for coal ash, to prevent the pollution of waterways, groundwater, drinking water, and air. Chemtrails are a slap in the face of any and all regulations, be they national or international. And as far as the Basel Convention is concerned, they make a mockery of it because not only are our governments not properly disposing of this hazardous waste, they are dispersing it above our heads day and night. Chemtrails also violate the Basel Convention because they do the absolute opposite of what the Convention is supposed to prevent, namely the movement of hazardous waste between nations and the transfer of hazardous waste from developed to less developed nations. Well, chemtrails stay up for days and are moved by prevailing winds over thousands of kilometers ending up throughout the world, including less developed nations that never produced this waste in the first place and are supposed to be protected from it by the Basel Convention. If coal ash is not bad enough, consider also that it is not the worst stuff they're spraying us with. Aerosolized metals and nanoparticles as well as Welsbach materials are far worse than coal ash. Welsbach materials are also radioactive. Nanoparticles cross the brain-blood barrier and aerosolized metals get into our lungs and bloodstream. 
The second international convention chemtrails violate is the Convention on Long-Range Transboundary Air Pollution, which came into force in 1983 and is intended to protect the human environment against air pollution and to gradually reduce and prevent air pollution, including long-range trans transboundary air pollution. Chemtrails know no boundaries because winds know no boundaries and chemtrails are moved by the prevailing winds across the planet and therefore across all boundaries. Chemtrails therefore make a mockery of the convention on long-range transboundary air pollution because not only do they not prevent air pollution and its movement across air boundary across boundaries they greatly increase both and do so without any oversight or transparency which is why asthma has become an epidemic as well as eye problems degenerative brain disorders and at least a dozen other nasty diseases exacerbated by air pollution the third convention chemtrails violate is the Environmental Modification Convention, also known as the Convention on the Prohibition of Military or any other hostile use of environmental modification techniques. Now that's a mouthful. This convention came into force in 1978 to prohibit the military or other hostile use of environmental modification techniques having widespread long-lasting or severe effects. This convention bans weather warfare, which is the use of weather modification techniques for the purpose of inducing damage or destruction. Since the term environmental modification technique includes any technique for changing through the deliberate man manipulation of natural processes, the dynamics, composition or structure of the earth including its biota, uh, uh, lithosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere, or of outer space, chemtrails certainly violate this convention because they alter both the dynamic and the composition of the atmosphere. Considering that this convention came into being as an agreement between the United States and the Soviet Union to prohibit the use of any environmental or geophysical modification activity as a weapon of war, it is no wonder that the Russians are not pleased with the geoengineering program. For although chemtrails are meant to prevent global warming and therefore to prevent the climate from changing from its current stable state to an unstable state in the near future, they disrupt weather patterns and therefore alter the weather in the short term possibly aggravating droughts and heavy rainfall unintentionally. And whether the damage they do is intentional or unintentional is really of no consequence to the people who come to suffer as a result of this damage. The fourth convention violated by chemtrails is the Convention on Environmental Impact Assessment in a Transboundary Context which came into force in 1997 to force signatory nations to not notify and consult each other on all major projects under consideration that are likely to have a significant adverse environmental impact across boundaries. Chemtrails have a number of adverse environmental effects across boundaries, which are well known. What is worse, their long-term effect is totally unknown and could be disastrous. They could, for instance, change uh, precipitation patterns or induce abrupt temperature, temperature changes when terminated. The risks are great and we don't have another planet to seek refuge to in case we completely screw up the climate on Earth. No environmental impact could possibly determine what will happen if we interfere with the weather on a global scale as the geoengineering program does. And of course, no environmental impact is possible when talking about a global project that is also supposed to go on for decades and increase in scope and scale. And the fifth and last convention violated by chemtrails is the Stockholm Convention on Persistent 
organic pollutants, which came into force in 2004 to eliminate or restrict the production and use of persistent organic pollutants. Persistent organic pollutants are defined as chemical substances that persist in the environment, bioaccumulate through the food web, and pose a risk of causing adverse effects to human health and the environment. 180 parties to the Convention have ratified it, including the, the European Union, but not the United States. There are several persistent organic pollutants in coal ash, such as dioxins, furans, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And while we're being told their accumulation in the ash is not at hazardous concentrations, those assurances are worthless when we are forced to breathe in this stuff at all hours of the day and night over a period of years or decades. Such long-term exposure can only be catastrophic to human and animal health, regardless how low the concentration. If our governments were to acknowledge that they can trail us, they would immediately become liable for violating these five international conventions and all our health. That is why they deny, deny and deny. Now you know.